This is a regular sized Furby. And this is nightmare fuel. Let's go make something weird. A couple months ago, I turned YouTubers Evan and Caitlin into human Furbies by making them masks that form fit to their face. They really seemed to like them, so Evan and Caitlin practically begged me to make them another Furby. Their plan is to take one of those walking robot dog things and turn it into a giant walking Furby, which is a terrifying idea, so I don't really know why I signed up for this. In my last video, I made the assumption that most people knew what a Furby was, but I got a lot of comments saying that they had never heard of one or they didn't know why people were afraid of them. There is very much reason to be afraid of these things. First of all, I mean, they're analog technology. I don't fully understand how analog stuff works like that. Like it runs off of mayonnaise and witchcraft. I don't know how it works. But on top of all that, these were incredibly smart for their time. Like they had an AI built into them. This is a kid's toy. And don't even get me started how the NSA banned them from their offices because of a security concern. After my last video, my mom texted me and she was like, yeah, there's a reason you didn't grow up with one of these in your house. <laughs> Understood. Got it. I get it now. <laughs> but before we get started with anything, I need to have a quick meeting with Evan and Caitlin. So let's go do that real quick. When we were originally talking about this idea, Evan was showing like, see if we can try to put the, the Furby's face like directly over the front of it. Then we talked about some of the issues where it might be covering up sensors and like maybe there's like these different styles that we could possibly do. And I compiled like the best ones that I could think of and included like some of the pros and cons that I think we've got. So here we go. <laughs> My presentation dot PowerPoint. Yes, I'm ready. So the first option. Oh God, oh, oh no. It's possible that these mock-ups might be too good. I'm afraid that we're not gonna be able to live up to these expectations. I know, that's really Such good. Such glorious heights. There's plenty of room for the electronics because Evan and I talked about like, allowing it to still be able to move its eyes and stuff. Attachment points is another thing that we might need to figure out. We might be able to make something that can like sort of clip into like the shoulder blades. That's yeah. the only thing I can think of so far. Yeah, yeah. we want to make sure it's not top heavy. Oh God, the oh, next the one's spider. called the spider. Yeah, so we got the spider. Oh, oh that yeah. one's worse. I know, I don't, I don't know if I like it or not. It's, it's, it's something. I think it's worse because it's like, it looks like two creatures merged together. And it's yeah, like right. one yes. creature. Yeah, it like, like the way that it sort of like melds into, into the other shape. Uh, oh. I do think this one would be the most stable. Arachno Furby. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm experiencing that right now. <laughs> I hate spiders. So this is the last one. Okay, I call no this neck. one Mr. No Neck. Oh, oh yes, <laughs> yes. That's pretty beautiful. He True. looks like a slim Furby gorilla or something. This is, has probably the least amount of room for the electronics. It mm -hmm. Maybe we could bring it forward just a little bit and then like yeah. we'd have a little more room. But the original thing that brought up this whole issue was the front sensors. It might be okay, but we could just avoid the whole worry by going with the Centaur, you know? Right. Even though Mr. No Neck looks amazing, and that was actually one of my original visions. I'm most curious about Centaur. What about you? I am also, I think, leaning towards Centaur. Do you guys yeah. have any preferences on the final coloring? I think it's a really good that we are choosing gray for the color because the huh. robot is gray also. So if there's any like missing, that's a good point actually. The fur or anything that's a really like good that, point. Or, yeah, because like you know. Humans have fur. skin and fur. So it's like, my thought is the plastic is like the skin and the fur is like the hair. So, you know, if there's some parts that are okay. plastic and some parts that are fur, it's more natural if it's like the same color. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Awesome. It was great chatting. It's fun. Uh, yeah. I love the PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> Perfect way to do it. <laughs> yes. All righty. Thank right. you guys. Awesome. See you See later. Ya. There we go. On this one. Oh no, that's way worse. Oh no. Oh, this is awful. Can you still turn on? <laughs> oh. Alright, so can't oh. Gosh. 
Could this get any worse? How do people not think that these things are terrifying? I hate this. Why did I sign up for this? That's off. <laughs> I'm gonna vomit. Well, that looks much less terrifying now, but this... I'm not, I'm not scared of that face. That, that's, that, oh, poor guy. With that taken care of, we're ready to start modeling stuff. All right, so we're over here in Fusion 360. I'm gonna start getting this stuff modeled up. We got our little guy. Hello. So this is the work that we did in the Furby mask video. While most of it is fairly accurate and I do trust most of my measurements, we're gonna mostly be starting from scratch. So let's get moving on that. So I know we're only just getting started, but I did want to take this opportunity to remind you guys that I do upload all of my project files over onto my Patreon. So if you are one of my supporters over there, you'll be able to have access to all those and you can make your own Furby. The model looks pretty good. There might be some like minor differences, but I think it's gonna at least function how we need it to. So now I think we're gonna grab this guy and I think we'll get a 3D scan of this. And I think that should be enough for our purposes. All right, so I've got them over here ready to scan. I'm hoping to possibly get some of these inner details along with the outside, but if all I get is just the outer layer, it'll be fine, I'll work it out. So let's go ahead and... Well, that looks like garbage. I didn't really expect it to do all that well because usually scanners have trouble getting shiny black stuff and I don't have any of that fancy scanning spray stuff that's supposed to make surfaces easier to scan so let me try something real quick. Hold on. Alright, I'm gonna try covering him in a little bit of flour. I don't know if this will work. I mean, maybe that'll work, maybe it won't. I made a mess, but maybe it'll be worth it. Let's try it real quick. Just see what happens. Dude, that works so freaking well. That is awesome. I did not expect that to work as well as it did. That was great. Okay. Note taken. Use flour. That's awesome. Much more white powder later. All right, I had to get a little bit creative, but things turned out pretty good. I mean, that's like a ton of detail. I mean, we were able to get all of the inside areas as well. All I need to do is just clean it up a little bit, mesh mixer it, and be like, I think that's gonna be ready to go. I guess we'll hop over there and do that real quick. All right. All right, so it's actually a couple days into the future. Uh, we finished fixing this scan up, and it looks pretty good. I think as far as replicating the Furby goes, I think we're done. I mean, that seems like it fits pretty well. Okay, all right. I was fully expecting something to be like completely off, but that looks pretty solid. So now I've got the wonderful task of modeling up all of the mechanisms that are gonna move stuff around. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna save you guys from all that. I'll just check back in with you guys when I'm done. If you don't hear from me before then, then things went great. One week later. Uh, okay, so much time has passed since that last clip. There was so much more work that needed to be done than I was expecting, but I think the Furby element of this is done now. I finished up all of the elements that are gonna be on the face, and then we did all of this work inside, which is some of the most complicated modeling that I've ever done. So we've even got all of our like arms for the, the motors here and everything, and everything actually works, which is an absolute miracle. I don't know, oh my gosh, I about peed myself when this worked. Like, his eyes open and close, it, it works. I could not get the mouth to work in this program, but theoretically, I think it works. I gave it the right tolerances and stuff. I think, I don't know. So that is done. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just about it. I say we go ahead and bring this all over in the mesh mixer. Uh. Actually, before I could do any of that, I needed to take the scan that Evan sent me of the robot dog and prepare it to be able to accept a Furby. And it turned out pretty good, actually. All right, this is the moment of truth. Let's see how this looks. Okay, so he's gonna be like, yeah, something like that. 
Okay. All right, so I think that's actually it for the Furby modeling, I think. I think it, it's always at this point that I uh, terrified that I'm forgetting something very important, but I, I think that's everything. Like we've got this modeled up, we've got this mount basically ready. We've got the magnets cut out. I guess we're ready. I, okay. Gosh, this is gonna be so many pieces. Okay, let's uh, start slicing this up. This is probably gonna take a little bit. Uh, so this is gonna take like three days, which isn't that bad, um, but let's do the other parts now and see how long they'll take. All right, so these pieces are getting printed at a slightly higher quality. It's only gonna take us about a day, which I mean, that's sounds like a pretty good deal to me. So we will go pop these over on the printer and I'll see you guys in a little while. At least this turned out good. Hey, it's Austin from the future. I'm sure you may have noticed these shirts that I was wearing throughout this video. I have actually started a merch store. Something nobody asked for, yay. <laughs> The ones that I've been wearing throughout this video are actually kind of prototypes. I've since then made them look a little more distressed and stuff. I'm not really good at promoting my own stuff. So yeah, go. So I've gone over my sanding process before, but I'll go over it again just for people who are new. I use this stuff called Bondo, which is completely cover the part, filling in all the gaps and cracks and everything. And then I sand all that stuff off, which is super easy. Then I also use this filler primer stuff and sand all of that off. And then when I go to actually paint the whole thing, you can hardly ever see any of the layer lines. It looks like a super smooth part. It takes some time, dedication, but I think it's really worth it. One sleep later.
expected, the arms for the beak absolutely did not work, so I reprinted them in this flexible filament and it turned out a whole lot better. So by some miracle, Coco is alive. I'm not really sure how I managed to do it, but he's working. He talks, blinks, does all that jazz. So I, I guess he's done. There it is. Oh my gosh. I know I say this with basically every project, but this is so cool. Like, I love how this turned out. I'm really proud of this. Don't get me wrong, it's terrifying. I hate it, but it, this is great. I love it so much. For never having made an animatronic before this, I am blown away at how well this turned out. Like this should not have gone as well as it did. It still gives strong like Five Nights at Freddy's vibes. It's really creepy looking. I'm glad this doesn't live in my house anymore. I'm so happy to ship this off to Heaven Caitlin. The packing up the giant Furby was a little bit bittersweet because I knew I would probably not get to see him ever again, but I was very happy to know that I was sending him off to a good home. Hey, it's Austin from the future again. Since basically every Furby project that I've ever made, I've actually shipped off to somebody else. That means I don't have any of my Furby work here. So I have enlisted the help of PCB Way to make me a little memento for this video. And the box just came in. Let's open this up. I'm so excited. This is pretty big. They wrapped it up really good. Oh man. Okay, it's, here we go. Oh, I see the ears poking. Oh my gosh, no way. This is gonna be so much better quality than I was expecting. Holy cow, wait. <laughs> oh man. Can you hear that? Like, it's metal. I've never had something like 3D printed in metal before. This is really, really cool. There's no like layer lines or anything. And that's just part of how metal 3D printing works, I believe. It's just using a completely different process. So everything is so smooth. Okay guys, please go check out PCB Way. They did sponsor this portion of the video, but honestly, I would have bought this anyways, cause this is so cool. Like having a metal, that's so cool. I'm gonna have to make like a little shelf or something to put them on right here. Put them up right here. Thank you, PCB Way. This is really neat. I like it. All right, so enough time has actually passed that I have seen the final form of this Furby robot. Yes, in case you forgot, this is not the end of the project. If you wanna see where the rest of this goes, you gotta go check out Evan and Caitlin's video over on their channel. But honestly, I'm assuming that most of you guys watched their video first and then came here. So, hi, welcome. My name's Austin. I do want to take a quick moment to thank Evan and Kaylin for this incredible opportunity. They were so awesome to work with. They really are incredible people, even behind the scenes. So please go show them some love for me. They really deserve it after having to put up with me. <laughs> but with that, I guess we're all done here. So, bye. 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 You should check out some of my other videos. This is when I turn them into Furbies, and these are just some other cursed projects that I made.